pleased to have this twice annual chat with Maddie Playle from the Racing Post, of course. Great to see you here as always, Maddie, and um, wonderful to be back, I'm sure. Um, slightly sort of softer underfoot conditions this time. Yeah, it's like being back home. Uh, with the rain we had yesterday, it was unbelievable. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how that's going to play into Sunday and whether it's going to make that much of a difference. Obviously, we're used to the Chartin track draining incredibly well, and it's still pretty humid here. Nothing like what I'd be used to back home. So we'll see. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, we've just seen the first of our workers this morning. Obviously, the Japanese always a very strong presence here in Hong Kong. Prognosis we've just seen. I mean, he would perhaps, if any, would be leading the Japanese attack, wouldn't he? Definitely. Uh, I think he's one of the four most likely winners uh, in the QE2 Cup on Sunday. He looked great. You know, he's been here plenty of times now. He's very straightforward. Um, worked well, looks well in himself. No negatives for me. Uh, we saw Sunrise Ronaldo as well, the sprinter. Having spoken to some of the Japanese contingent, he's quite a hot horse, so we were worth watching him throughout the week. Yeah, Graham was just saying that. I think given his performance last year, and obviously Zach's report on him was that he can just be a little bit fired up. Um, there's a few little unknowns this year from, from Team Japan. Obviously, horses that we haven't seen before. Sunrise Ronaldo is, is one, I suppose, amongst others. Uh, Elton Barrows uh, joins them as well. So, uh, I mean, I won't put you on the spot, or at least try not to, but how much do you know about those horses? A little. Uh, I was really taken with Elton Barrows as a physical yesterday, actually, when he came out. Uh, really taking things in his stride. He was a little bit green, just getting a feel of the track, but um, some of my my colleagues seem to think a lot of him. And then there's the other Japanese horse who I cannot pronounce, Obamurai. Obamurai, I think. There you been. go. We'll go with that. Um, obviously, he's been down in Australia. Uh, I really like the way uh, he won his big race out there. He's a young horse, progressive horse, and physically I like what I've seen from him as well. I'd definitely be keeping an eye on him. Yeah, he's certainly of interest, as they always are, I suppose. Um, I can't speak to you without asking you about Team GB, I guess. There's three of them coming over. They're represented in every single race. Let's start with Dubai Honor. We'll see him shortly uh, out on the track. He's back for another go. How much has he got to find, do you think, from your point of view on his performances so far here? Because he, you know, he's run some really good races. A little, but perhaps not that much. Um, I was actually surprised with the manner of his victory uh, in the September stakes uh, at Kempton last time. I thought he was really impressive against some smart horses. I wasn't quite expecting him to be quite um, as strong as he was at the finish. Uh, we saw him out yesterday momentarily on the dirt. He looked good. Um, his rider was very happy with him. I don't think he's got that much to find, particularly if it does rain on Sunday on race day itself. The conditions will suit him. He's obviously enjoyed a really good prep. William has targeted this race from a long way out with him. He's definitely going to be there and thereabouts. I'd expect him to be involved. And the other two are very interesting because we're learning about them all the time. Uh, we're learning about them also, but so too their trainers. Now, obviously, you've forever got your finger on the pulse when it comes to, to British racing, amongst other jurisdictions, of course. George Bowie, Archie Watson, not a familiar name or two familiar names, perhaps, to punters here in Hong Kong, but they very soon could be and they probably should be because they're two very good trainers. Definitely. Both very young, ambitious, up-and-coming trainers. Uh, I spoke to George before believing, flew out here, and, you know, he is already making a name for himself on the global stage. He's had a lot of success very early on. He won a British Classic with Caché, and to do that as quickly as he has and build the sort of business that he has is just very, very impressive. Um, he's very good at targeting his horses, getting the most out of his horses, and... It's interesting that we've seen a shift in the way he operates from trying to get numbers and lots of winners to now a shift to looking for that quality. And he's got a, a real Group 1 horse in Believing, who's only a four-year-old. She's still improving. She finished third, a close third in the Haydock Sprint Cup last season. And he thinks that she should be very well suited to the Chairman Sprint Prize on Sunday. Yeah, looking forward to, to her running, of course, and, and Archie brings Brave Emperor. I mean, if there was ever, if you look up hard knocking horse in the dictionary, you're going yeah. to find him, aren't you? That's so true, yeah, exactly. He's been strutting his stuff uh, abroad, and in contrast to believing this is the start of her season, this is almost the end of his campaign. I suspect he'd be having a break after, after this. Um, so the difference in condition between them will be quite interesting to see. Physically, he's a strong animal. Uh, he really struck me when he came out onto the dirt track yesterday. He, um, he had a lot of energy. The rider was saying that he'd, uh, he'd settled in very well, but he was doing plenty. N not anything in a bad way. Um, but I think the tactics uh, of Sunday's race, the mile, could really suit him. I think Voyage Bubble's likely to be the pace angle. Uh, he could sit just behind him. Golden 60, if he gets another disaster draw, as he did in December, 
that could be tricky for Vincent to navigate. Uh, Luke Morris is coming out, his first ride here in Hong Kong. I'm hopefully going to speak to him a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, Brave Emperor, he, just, he seems to do everything very easily. He seems a very professional horse. He certainly does. Well, listen, Maddie, great to chat to you as always. I think we've got to see a few more horses gallop, but uh, a pleasure, and I um, hope you enjoy the rest of the week, and uh, thank you for your insight. Thanks, Nick. Cheers.